photovoltaic cells are made from materials called semiconductors, mostly using silicon. Two sides are put together, a mad rush of electrons flow to the positive side. Eventually, equilibrium is reached and an electric field is created. This conducts electric current in only one direction. When light in the form of photons hits the solar cell, it excites the electrons and the field sends the electrons to the negative side. The metal contacts on the top and bottom of the cell draw current off, streaming towards another cell and so forth, creating a module or group of cells. When packaged into a frame, a solar panel is created. This will provide electricity cleanly and quietly for the next 30 years. As air particles collide against an object, each of them pushes with an amount of energy. The wind blades capture wind energy and start moving. They spin a shaft that leads from the rotor to a generator where magnets spin. If you have a conductor that surrounds those magnets, voltage is induced. Then it drives electrical current out through the power lines. At its essence, generating electricity from the wind or sun is all about transferring clean energy from one medium to another. The power generated by our sources goes to the power organizing module. This distributes energy to the batteries. When fully charged, it stops charging and sends the current for household usage. It also prevents overdraining of the batteries, making them last much longer. Rise over mountain ranges, they cool becoming so saturated with water that water begins to fall as rain, snow or hail depending on the temperature of the surrounding air. Water from clouds is captured by the roof and channeled to gravel filters and silt catchers so when it reaches your cisterns it's clean. The water from the cisterns is then gravity fed into a water organizing module that pumps and filters water into a pressure tank for consumption and house usage. Every time we wash something or flush the toilet, we create wastewater. Wastewater from sinks, showers, baths, kitchens and washing machines is called grey water. Usually grey water will contain household chemicals like soap and detergents, and easily degradable organic materials like fat and oil. Consequently, grey water is channeled through a filter or digester for grease and particles then sent into an indoor deep rubber-lined botanical cell. A botanical cell is a built soil ecosystem that consists of various soil layers. The first layer, composed of gravel, to allow water to flow and provide good aeration or oxygenation, preventing nasty smells. At the top of the botanical cell, plants absorb water by the process of transpiration where evaporation from the leaves enable water to be absorbed through the roots. Nearby root soil dries out. The water at the bottom slowly flows towards the drier soil near the plants. The flow allows phosphates and household chemicals to be completely filtered. The peat moss provides additional filtering, efficiently eliminating heavy metals, if any. At the end of the botanical cell, there is a grey water organising module which pumps the treated water to the toilets. Once the toilets are flushed, water now contains faecal coliforms and loads of organic materials. This is called black water, which goes to the septic tank. After the liquids are separated from the solids, the treated water is then channeled to an exterior landscaping botanical cell feeding outdoor plants in the same manner as the grey water botanical cell. In short, earthships make very efficient use of the captured water by using it four times. First, you use it to wash, then to water your indoor garden, then to flush the toilet, then to water your landscaped garden. To survive, grow and reproduce, plants need water, sunlight, carbon dioxide, oxygen and nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen. All of these are found inside the earthship, allowing many edible plant options to grow in your botanical cell. In short, earthships can grow food year-round by providing sunlight all year, protection for the plants from extreme conditions like frost, an automatic watering system, a good soil composition and nutrients from grey water like nitrogen and phosphorus.
At the end, earth ships are structures that are built using recycled materials, take advantage of natural phenomena, produce goods and use technology, creating beneficial contributions to environmental issues like the following. 1. Energy consumption. Fossil fuels supply around 90% of the world's commercial energy. This has to stop soon. Earthships reduce energy needs to a minimum by not needing central heating and air conditioning. By generating their own clean energy, they contribute to minimize global warming. 2. Water consumption. The water you normally get from the grid is pumped from lakes, rivers and underground water, often travelling long distances for human usage, consuming a lot of energy. With Earthships, you harvest your own water, so it's a safe net, plus you help our planet by reducing global warming and water scarcity. 3. Sewage. The sewage systems around the world are inefficient. Normally we don't separate grey from black water and in most places there aren't any water treatment plants so it goes directly to rivers, lakes and the sea. Earth ships use water in such a manner that there is no actual discharge. Your wastewater will never leave your property, meaning you do not pollute nearby rivers, lakes or the sea. 4. Food consumption. Global agriculture uses 60% of the total fresh water in the world. Food production today has to be technified to meet the large demand, resulting in burning fossil fuels, using chemical nutrients and pesticides, therefore emitting greenhouse gases, polluting soil, water and the product itself. 5. Wastes. Everything we consume is a potential waste, because nothing is useful forever. Some materials no longer used don't degrade, occupying space and contaminating in several ways. Earthships use materials like tyres that otherwise would have little or no use at all.